and welcome to That School Speaks. Today is the first of September-ish. Not the first day, just like the first week. This is episode 180. 180, I think. Pretty sure. It's 179. Whatever, that means like if you watch an episode every day, you could watch one for half of a year. How is that po Don't do that. I'm not recommending that you do that. <laughs> It's crazy town. Um, I'm Amy Beth, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and the Fat S Q R R L on Instagram. How are you? If you've been with me for any of the other 180 episodes, okay, like 177, because one, the first one was not in the regular place, and the last, and the outside one was different. But you'll see I'm in a different place. I feel like I needed a change. So I don't know if this will be permanent because I'm not sure the lighting will work out. But we'll just see how it goes. So if there's like glare on my glasses, it's very annoying. Okay, but it has to be very annoying before you tell me. Can you promise it'll be very annoying before you tell me? <laughs> but if it's annoying, tell me. <laughs> I don't think I can do it. Yeah. I should actually, I wonder if I should try to do an episode without my glasses on because I would not be able to see myself. Like I can't actually see myself without my glasses on. And I can see that I'm in the fame. That's important. But maybe it would make a, maybe it would make an interesting episode. Anyway, but I do kind of like to see what's going on. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh, I don't know, I'm in a different place. So let me know what you think. If you think, well, if you think good or bad, like, you know, just let me know what you think. Um, this week, oh, I should have brought those over. Could I do that right now? I was still trying to think of shenanigans, but like, let's be honest, there's not really been a ton of shenanigans because I have to be brutal. It's like, we're in Indiana. Just see this is like my crappy office chair. <laughs> Probably my butt. Hmm. That's an added bonus. <laughs> you can donate at thefestworld.com. Um, oh, so it's like 90 degrees and even still it's Labor Day. It was Labor Day in the U.S. So like we have like, everyone's like, oh, what did you do? It was like, we did nothing. My husband threw out his back. <sighs> men in pain. That's all I need to say, right? Not all men. Uh, all the ones I've known though. Um, <laughs> so my husband threw out his back. My daughter is like having crazy growing pains where she's like, not like fun Kirk Cameron styles. She didn't bring over her friend Boner this weekend. No. What were they thinking for that? Anyway. She <laughs> I feel like I should edit that out, but I won't. Uh, Cause it was his name. It's legit. Don't judge me. Um, so she's actually having like crazy growing pains where her legs just hurt. And she, we soak her in Epsom salt. The, the doctor says like, that's just, sometimes it happens when your kid grows like three inches in a day. Really good. Any minute she's doing like women's size clothing, which I don't care about, like in terms of like what she's physically is lovely and wonderful and it is what she is. It's just that I'm like, I can see the price point changing dramatically <laughs> for all of her clothes. <sighs> so anyway, so like what'd you do? We did nothing, but it was fun. Cause I got a lot of stuff done. But one of the things we did do, we had crazy weather, not this last week, but the week before. Actually one day, this has never happened, my daughter's in fourth grade. Sorry, it took me a minute to make sure that was right. <laughs> Don't judge me. She's in fourth grade and this never happened before, but they literally held them at school for two hours because there was a tornado explosion or whatever. I, nobody was, as far as I know, Nobody was injured, but there was lots of damage in terms of, not lots of damage, there was damage. So they held them at school till like 6 p.m. Right. And I couldn't go get her because literally like there was storm and it was traffic, was whatever. And then two days after that, she went to school and they had no power. So they had to like send the kids to a different school. Anyway, all of this, in this meantime, there's been crazy rain and stuff. And I don't have any 
waterproof. I have water resistant hiking shoes, but I don't have any like galoshy she shoes because I'm super fat. You can't tell from this. This is my skinniest part. Well, this is my skinniest part, but you know what I mean? Like I'm way fat. So like even the extra wide calf boots, my calves laugh at those. <laughs> even the extra, extra wide calf boots, because there's some with two extras, my calves still, ha ha ha, joke. So I don't have any rain boots because rain boots are super cute. I think we've discussed on the show before a long time ago that, you know, if I were a bajillionaire, I would make a rain boot company for fat ladies. <sighs> Sorry, there's 3D printing. Like we live in a world where there's 3D printing and other remarkable stuff, but that's the first thing that came to mind. Like really, we can't like make some custom made rain boots for really fat ladies? Just saying. Or gentlemen's. But anyway, so I don't have rain boots because huh, all those things I just said. For some reason, I can't remember if the internet knew this or if I actually looked. You know, because sometimes the internet knows you want something and it puts an ad on something and you're like, that's creepy internet. And the internet's like, I know. So I can't remember how this happened, but I discovered that there's this thing that Crocs makes. Okay. Judge Crocs, don't judge Crocs. I don't care. I don't like Crocs because I don't like to wear socks very much. And I don't like that rubbery stuff on my feet because my feet then turn into a million degrees. And then there's like lava and things happen. But they make this rain boot. And it's like just a short one. It's just a shorty, right? And for some reason I thought, hey, Crocs. You make stuff for middle Americans. Maybe you'll make a fatter legged rain boot. <laughs> Guess what they do? <laughs> so this boot is made because of course I wear a size 11, so I cannot judge the width of this on any other size. But because it is not a, it doesn't have like a rubbery gusset or anything, you have, it has to be made so that your foot can get in there and there's an angle that happens to happen. You know what I mean? So this is actually a pretty good circumference. And I, I should have measured it. Maybe I'll remember to do that and put it in the notes. Olive is very upset with me. What's the matter, Olive? Come on. She doesn't know what's happening. She's like, what are you doing there? Okay, don't lick my eyeballs in front of other people. They'll think you're poorly trained. She is. <sighs> she likes to lick people's eyeballs. It's not just people eyeballs. Annie eyeballs, too. She's weird. But look at how cute she is. <laughs> Whatever. I'm such a bad lady. <laughs> anyway, back to this. So they even have them in crazy colors like raspberry and bright blue and these are just navy and black. But they totally fit on my fat legs. What? Again, they're short. But they still fit. I've tried those ones with like the elasticized gusset. Well, I've tried one pair. That's enough. These totally work, but I will also warn you that you should put them on with socks. <laughs> because I was so excited they actually fit on my foot. I did a little dance around and then I went to take them off without any socks on. I went to take them off. You know that weird material that Crocs are made out of? Then the reason I don't like them in shoes is because they like are not a breathable material. So they create a vacuum on your foot. So my giant fat lady foot is in here, filling uh, the crevices quite fully. Quite, I mean, there's not like a lot of breathing room. <laughs> and then proceeded to create a vacuum. So I had to... <laughs> Are you okay? Have you been loved enough? So I had to lay down and <laughs> my husband like pull them off of me. So just try them on with socks, please. It was very exciting. I did have a moment where I was like, I'm gonna have to have him cut these shoes off my feet. I put them on with socks later and that did not happen. It was A-OK. -okay. Of course, I'm laughing hysterically and also ouching because you know, your foot has to be flexed at a weird angle to get out of any shoe like this. And then he's like, I mean, he's really putting all of his weight which is not much, but it's still some, to pull the shoe off of me and there's this vacuum that's like sucking my foot. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but this dolphin is exciting. I can wash and squash around because the neighborhood I live in, people do not maintain their sidewalks in front of their houses. And so one of the, and actually I don't even, I think that might be, whatever. There is a, there are two places on the walk to the bus stop that when it rains heavily, we have like five inches of water on the sidewalk. And like, it's fine when it's 90 flipping degrees outside, which is right now. But soon it's not going to be, right? Soon. Soon we can eat all of the jam and bread and soup and be happy for I totally did make nectarine jam. It was totally fun. Except I'm kind of disappointed in myself. I was not planning to make nectarine jam. We just happened to get a bunch of nectarines and they were so beautiful and I thought, well, I should just make some jam with these. Because I was wanting a cobbler, but then I knew that I would eat all the cobbler because nobody else would eat the nectarine cobbler in my house. So. <laughs> and I knew I would eat all the nectarine cobbler. <laughs> let it go to waste. It's beautiful. So I decided to make jam and like parcel out my nectarine enjoyment. Do you know what a nectarine is? I don't do that. I'm sure they have them everywhere now, right? It's like a peach subsidiary that doesn't have the fuzzy skin. The cool thing about them is you can use, you can just chop them up to make a jam with them. You don't have to peel them first. Not that it's that big of a pain like to peel a peach, but it is an extra step. I don't think though, the nectarines I got were not freestone. I've never had a freestone nectarine, so I don't know that that even exists. So it is more, a little bit more complicated to get them off of the stone. So quite frankly, really, it's like six one half dozen the other in my mind. Sorry, Olive is just gonna squeak her tiny bear toy and be so cute. Anyway, I feel like if I tilt my head this way, it's better for the glasses, but then I'm tilting my head this way a lot. This is kind of weird. What was I talking about? Nectarine jam. Oh. So the cool thing is you can just chop them up. You don't have to peel them. But again, the stones is an issue. But neither here nor there. I made some nectarine ginger jam. And my recipe was out of like the ball, just the plain ball book. And it was for peaches, but they're kind of the same thing. Nectarines are just like a punchy peach, right? So I thought, ooh, that'll be even better. Except I totally forgot in my excitement and joy that I was using the skins on them which have pectin in them. So I used the regular amount of pectin and that is some solidly set jam. <laughs> it's like jello jam. Jello jam! Which is kind of sad because I, but it's, it's still wonderful and beautiful. I used the, see what did I, it was like, I just, but I used the low sugar pectin because sometimes I just don't want that much sugar. So then that might be a two. I've never used that before. So maybe that is even more jelly-y than the regular pectin. I don't know. <sighs> but it was fun. Except for that moment of being like, why didn't I re think? I just didn't even think. I knew that. But in the moment, I just didn't even think. I was just excited to make my jam. It's very tasty though. Yay. What else? I didn't wear green boots and jam. What, what am I even talking about? This is a podcast about fiber things. Maybe I should talk about those. Wah, wah. No, they're fun. Okay, so I have some... Oh! Should we do this? I was thinking that we should do a kid along. That's not my idea. And now I can't remember who it was. Somebody posted on the boards that I... I want to say fiber nymph, but now I looked on her group and I did not see it, so that may be just me making things up. I couldn't find the original post, but I did read it and remember it, except I don't remember anything about it except what I wanted to remember. I think we should have a kit along. Do you want to do a kit along? I think we should do it in October. So it could be any kit. It doesn't have to be fibery. It could be like a, I really wanted to get one of those like, I really want to carve wooden spoons. I'm very afraid. Because <laughs> I'm kind of klutzy. Uh, but I really want to do that because I think it would be awesome. So it could be like a carving wooden spoons kit. It could be any sort of kit. But we would do them in October. Do you think that would be fun? I think that would be fun. What do you want to do? Let's do it. So whoever thought of that, thank you, you're awesome. October will be kid along. I feel like I'm saying that. <laughs> 
Never mind. I feel like it's like a Star Trek reference. It hasn't happened yet. So I finished this little guy. Remember last time I talked about him? This is a kid I got at Rhinebeck, and I apologize. I don't have the information with me. Which is um, wool hooking. Rug hooking. With wool strips. So you can do it with yarn and stuff, but this one is with wool strips. And this originally was like this longer oblong piece. But I could, there were bees on the corner. I could not make the bees look right. They were just sad. So... So I didn't. And then my mom had this idea. I was not sure how to bind it because I, she told me, thanks mom, that you can just roll the edge of the burlap or whatever. Just roll the edge of the burlap and then just like whip stitch around it. So I just used some Madeline Tosh because it was in the scrap bin and it worked, I thought. This is not whiskey barrel, but some color like that. And um, so then I just whip stitch it really solidly, obviously. You could leave it so that the burlap showed through, but. I didn't like that. So I just did that. I used just two strands at once to make it go slightly faster. And then I just glued a wool felt backer on it. And now it's like a cute little mug rug or like a candle thingy. I, it's cute, right? It's totally cute. So what I should really do is whip stitch around the edge of the wool circle. But I haven't done that yet. <laughs> just to like attach it without just adhesive but with actual stitching but I have not done that yet so yeah, I'm gonna do that soon. and then I finished something else shut up I did not buy this at Rhinebeck these bull balls but Stacy of mustache sheep who's so fancy had picked up this hers was square she bought one at at one of the vendors there at Rhinebeck that was like a square one and it's just like a hot pad right I mean just like a trivet um oh but they were all sold out and so I, was, I really loved it it's the picture of it is still in my iPod because I was like I need to take her in pictures so I gotta remember to get make that um so I bought these wool felt balls off of a seller on Etsy you can there's like a million different people who sell them in all different sizes and um, so I just bought one package. And I made this. Ah! It was a pain in the neck. It's so... I don't... It, okay. I don't think it was that much of a pain in the neck, but in my head it sounded so easy that when it wasn't that easy, I was like, this is a pain in the neck. Do you know what I mean? You know how that is? If I had just psyched, been psyched up for it being more of a pain in the neck, I would have been fine. But what you do is you just kind of sew these wool felt balls together. In my mind, I was gonna have like one of those upholstery, like those doll making needles, those really long ones. And then I was just gonna like stitch through and it was gonna be so easy peasy. That's not how it worked. <laughs> For one thing, I also thought the circle would be easier because it would just like build on itself and it wouldn't have to worry about keeping it square or whatever. But what you do is you just take a length, and I used two different things. At first I used upholstery thread, but it's kind of slippery, and it made it kind of more challenging. Then I used just regular embroidery floss. Sorry, I'm seeing that there's a little bit of glue showing. And nobody else is going to say it's just me. You didn't see it, right? So, why did I use this color? <laughs> Was I drunk? Anyway. <laughs> So you just take, and you do need like one of those little like gripper things, those little needle gripper, which you can get at Joanne's for just like a couple bucks for a package of three. And they're actually quite handy if you have like a circular needle set that twists, like I have the Chow Goo red twist laced or whatever. They work awesome on gripping your needle so you can use that little T-pin to tighten it up. And I used to, mine used to come untwisted a lot when I use the gripper and the T-pin. They very rarely, like almost never come loose. So, <laughs> you just, you start and you just like, you put like six of them on your, your you know, string six, wrap them around the center one, and then you kind of just like stitch them together. You can stick a needle and try to go through a few at a time, but really it's, it's kind of difficult to do that. I'm not a hand quilter, so like I don't maybe have like the tactile memory strength or something that would make that easier. But what I ended up doing is just kind of like running the stitch through this one and this one and this one and this one and this. So you just like kind of zigzag in and out. There are tutorials too. 
on the internets and whatnots. So it just kind of is a time consuming process, but it does look really cute, doesn't it? And then what I did for this one on the back, I actually, it, what I did was I actually laid down the craft glue and then put a little bit of fleece, like um, wool fleece, to try to help fill in a little bit of the, the nooks and crannies. So I thought that might help make it more rigid. And I think it did, but I don't think it really mattered, quite frankly. And then I glued on the backing. And then again, I should go around and whip stitch this down. I should. Will I? Who knows? Probably not until it starts to fall apart. <laughs> but isn't it cute? Let me say, you can buy... These little things are not super cheap, by the way. They shouldn't be. They're wool. Um, you can buy actual, like, full rugs out of these things. They look amazing. They're so cool. Wouldn't that be a fun rug? Ooh. I totally want to make those what is it, the shepherd's rug? Was that the book? I want to make one of those so bad. But this was kind of a pain. <laughs> and it's this big. Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe when I'm cooler, I'll make one of those. So what do you think? We should do it, right? We should totally do a kid along in... I can't stop thinking about Star Trek. A kid along in October, I think. You think that sounds like a plan? Okay, okay. Let's share all of our fun kits. Yes, okay, I have a kit to work on. I'm like, wait, do I even have a kit? Yes, I do. Let's do it. So quilting kit, woodworking kit, doesn't matter, just a kit. I might draw the line at techie kits. But you can build anything, I don't care. Yay! Okay, now let's actually talk about knitting and spinning. Oh my gosh, I finished all my spinning. Ah, it's so awesome. Okay, so... Forever in six years, I've been working on that Hello Yarn, right? Do you remember that? It's really, I really have been working on it forever. I finished it. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> right. <gasps> oh, this is so fat and awesome. Why are you so crazy good? So I did 20 ounces. It's a two ply and I have like 1600 yards. Yes, I have almost 1700 yards. This is organic Pullworth and the colorway is bedtime stories in my Hello Yarn. I really dig it. Super bad. I don't know what it's gonna be. Do you know? It smells so good too. Mm. <laughs> Just give me a moment, okay? Okay. Mm. But anyway, oh, I'm so I'm so excited about it. It's actually kind of good. I mean, not that there aren't like totally fluffy spots, but for me, it's pretty good. I actually don't mind fluffy spots at all. And it's like very uneven when you look at it in terms of like, they're like getting soft. When you knit with it, it doesn't really matter. As far as I can tell. It's, I don't know, to me it's more enjoyable just to like spin and be, and have it be a pleasant experience than to be like, oh my God, the purse is skinny. Oh my God, the purse is fat. I just go with it. So my yarn is not technically an achievement and all, but I enjoy it all the same. Look at this! Ah! So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what else? Oh, oh sure. Um, I guess just in general, since I have a lot of spinning, I should tell you, uh, these have all been spun. Yes. All three of the, no, yeah, yeah. Maybe not, no, I think so. I think I spun all three of these on a Hanson mini spinner, which I've had about a year now. I didn't really announce when I got it because when I got it, I primarily got it because I was having a lot of leg trouble. Because I really like treadling when I spin. Like it's a very enjoyable process. 
And a lot of people like the mini spinner because they can like um, spin very comfortably, like if, for example, like in a recliner or like someplace that they like enjoy watching TV or something. I, and like if you do worsted spinning, I think that's per, I don't really do worsted spinning. I do like a supported long draw and that sounds fancier than it is, but I do more of a woolen technique. And so I move this arm back a lot. So I still always spin in a kitchen chair <laughs> or a chair without an arm on it because I need to sit forward and not have anything, you know what I mean? I need to have this room for this thing to do this, for this arm to do this. So that's not the reason I, but for me it was mostly just because I was having, I'm still having, <laughs> but I'm having like really intense plantar fasciitis issues. They're not really intense. That's overblowing it, but it was very uncomfortable to treadle and it still is. I've been trying to do more and more to try to build up. Um, like I've done some plying on it that has helped and like that was pleasant. Uh, but so that's why I've been using the mini spinner um, and it is very enjoyable. I thought I would not like to spin without treadling and it is still enjoyable. I very much enjoy it. But next things. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. So then I spun this <laughs> because you need, you know, you got to have a little change change. And this is Rambouillet, right? No, Tarhi. That's right. This is Tarhi from Spun Right Round in her Dragon's colorway. And this is for Tova for some mittens. Because as soon as she, I got it for her. Like I got this colorway for her. And as soon as she saw it, she was like, I need it. I was like, don't really need that kid. So these will be mittens. She was on this thing where she was constantly asking for gloves. I hate to knit gloves. So luckily she asked for mittens. Yay! Bye bye. And then, I know, right? There's more. Just saying. I bought this. This is Three Waters Farm, Lost in the Rain. This is Finn. <gasps> right. I haven't spun much Finn. I think this is maybe only the second Finn I've ever spun. I feel like I feel like I may have spun some natural at one point. It's very enjoyable to spin. Have you ever spun with it? It kind of, it's not the soft, it's not like a Rambouillet or a, it's not the softest yarn. I would say it's like maybe between a BFL and a, and a Romney. So it's somewhere in there. But it's much like, I really love to spin Romney. It's super fun to spin. And it just seems to draft amazingly well. But it's so it had that feel to it where it's just like zoom, zoom, zoom. I spun this in one day. I never do that. Like I never spin four ounces in a day. But it was just like. Pew. So I'm actually hoping to use this. I'm going to do, um, which I do. Did I bring any knitting to <laughs> I knew I was going to be talking a lot. So I was like, I'll just save that for next week. I have started a, um, a hand spun hero for Ryan back. So I'm, I need, I had a third color, but it was like a little bit heavier than the worsted weight. So I wanted to try to get something that was closer. This is still maybe a tiny bit thicker than a worsted weight, more like a heavy worsted to Aaron, but I still think it'll work better than that. I'm not very good at spinning to like exact specifications. <laughs> okay. I'm not at all good at that, but it's in the ballpark. It's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's the top color. There's barely any of it anyway. But so yeah, isn't that cool? And Three Waters Farm stuff is of course gorgeous. I've been doing really about, well about not spinning fiber. In fact, about not buying fiber. Excuse me. Actually, I've been doing it relatively good overall, even with yarn. Relatively good. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, oh. But so I was up, I was looking for something to use in in lieu of this, because um, I just bought this because it happened to come up on my Instagram feed and it was the perfect colors exactly what I needed in Three Waters Farm. Shush! Don't judge me. I bought it right away. Anyway, <laughs> before I bought it though, I was upstairs rummaging to see. I was like, I've got to have a better fiber for this. It's got to have something that could work for this. I totally don't have any. I don't have. Okay, I still have more fiber than is reasonable, but I have way less fiber than I thought I did. And there. 
<laughs> I'm only mildly gluttonous, not ridiculously gluttonous. So I felt smug about that for 10 minutes. And then I bought some more fiber. Ha <laughs> ha. So anyway, Three Waters Farm, this was wonderful to spin. I may have just bought more of her fiber because she had put it on Instagram in the perfect colorway and I needed it right now. <sighs> I have seriously poor impulse control. Like you needed to even know that. The wall of yarn behind me. Just saying. It's not all my stash. Like I said, I have cast on a, on a um, hero. I actually have quite a bit of it, but it's just like a brown body, so it's like not that exciting anyway. And this podcast does not need to be 12 hours long. Okay. Um, and then I've worked more on my... Excuse me, Poncho, which I'm getting excited about. But it kind of just looks like the same wad of yarn as it looked like last time to you, so. But let me also say that, like, I had, so last time I talked about it, I had to rip out 12 inches. Maybe it was 10 inches. Okay, I think it was only 10 inches. It was a lot, because I read the pattern wrong. Because <laughs> I'm a dummy. Um, so I had to, oh, so I had to rework it. And then I reworked about half of that, and then I tried it on, and I was not feeling the love at all. I had a moment of like, really? I'm going through this for this product? What was I thinking? But I just tried it on again and I'm much more excited about it. Yay! I don't know, maybe I just was having a, I was probably just grumpy because I had to rip out so much of the knitting that anything would have been like, mm. But I tried it on again, I'm kind of excited. So there, I'm work, so I've worked on that too. But I did finish something. Cha-cha, cha-cha-cha-cha. So this is what's Megan's last name? Why can't I not think of it all of a sudden? Just run it. Who is Megan of the Stocking at Zombies? Uh, this is her pattern expanding community with the K in there. Community. And this is Diabolical Yarns. In the tar he socks, it's ninety percent superwash tar he, ten percent nylon. This is her watercolor stripes. I don't think I remember what the color is called, but it'll be in the show notes. I can't remember everything, people. Mm. What do I have it here? Ha ha! In the catatomic colorway. So again, diabolical yarns, tar he, self striping, watercolor, watercolor stripes. Sorry, not self striping, watercolor stripes. Catatomic. I totally dig them. What? So these are for me. I love the Tarky Sock people. I'll tell you, I'll let you know how it wears. I'm not wearing socks right now because as I said, it's 90 degrees. Shut the front door. But I will let you know how it wears because I like knitting with it a lot. It is a little bit fatter than, it's like a heavy fingering weight. It's so awesome, people. And again, it has just enough tooth that the stitches kind of grab each other, so it's like tension is nice. I'm hoping that that tooth means it will also wear a little bit better than regular merino, but we'll see. But I like it a lot. So fact and so fact and much. So fact and much. So much in fact. <laughs> then I cast on another pair of socks. This is also Diabolical's 90% or er, Tarhi sock. This is her colorway, Moulin Rouge. What? So these socks are for my mammal. You can tell. My mammal has tiny skinny feet. Well, they're not tiny. She wears a size nine. But she has skinny feet and I have super fat feet. <laughs> so this even has ribbing and it's still like, what? Um... So this is not a pattern. It's kind of loosely based on one of the toe up. Is it Wendy, Wendy Johnson who does all the toe up sock books? Am I making that up? Is that right? Anyway, it's loosely based on one of those from like the first toe up sock book. But it's just a made up stitch pattern basically. Isn't that cute? Did I tell you that when my my mamaw, her honey badger socks, those are the ones that just have the little eyelet hole in them. 
that she was fascinated that her socks had holes in them. So now she's getting a lot more socks with holes in them. I hope she's prepared for that. <laughs> so yay, my mother's holding them. On purpose. That's fancy. So anyway, so yeah, I like this a lot. Diabolical makes a lovely, but she's not the only person who has access to this base. Um, I also purchased, oh, it's right here. I don't usually talk about what I purchased, but this is from Friends in Fiber, and this is her colorway Pebble Beach. This is also that same 90%. Well, I guess I don't know that it's the same, but it seems like it's the same base. 90% Superwash Tarky, 10% Nylon. Maybe not, because it's 460 yards. I didn't think that one was... Like, like I need to do this on camera with you. Yeah, we're just chatting, right? You got knitting. You're not bored. You're just knitting. Is it the same? Oh, no, it's not the same, because this one's 115 grams, 430 yards. It's probably not the same base. But anyway, so multiple dyers are now carrying this dye, this Tarky sock base. I'm excited about it. Yay! But it still feels great. And I think it'll be awesome. So again, hopefully, hopefully that will will wear well. I forgot to mention, I'm sure you noticed, because we're such good friends, that my hair is shorter. I meant to mention that earlier. Do you like it? I totally rage cut it in the bathroom one morning. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I think I know what happened. Okay, I'm, I feel like I might be mildly young, too young to get the menopausals, the premenopausals. But I've had a couple of like having a hissy fit because I'm too hot moments over the last few weeks. Where I really am, I'm like my core temperature must be like 120 degrees right now. Like I, like I can just feel like, I just feel like there's molten stuff inside of me and I just, I can't function, I can't think. I just have to sit until my body regulates its temperature. I don't know if I'm premenstrual or just wicked fat. I'm not sure. <laughs> but during one of these moments, <laughs> when I got out of the shower and like all of the wet hair was touching me and I could feel it all over me, it like, oh, I just got completely creeped out. And so I, in true crazy lady fashion, ran down this, well, I didn't run, let's face it. <laughs> I moved gracefully down the steps, like with a towel only like half wrapped around me, and got the hair cutting scissors and went back upstairs. This is like before, this is a school morning too, by the way. Luckily my kids, it gets way early, so there was time. Let's just cut it in the bathroom over the sink with towel. <laughs> Luckily my husband was home, so I got like to this part here and to this part here, and I was able to come downstairs and be like, connect line, point A and point B with the scissors, please. Because I had like this like strip of hair like that. <laughs> and luckily he accommodated me. Well, like, clearly, because I wasn't going to do walk around with me looking at my hair. Like one patch of hair, just like, hmm, hipster mullet. No, I don't think so. <laughs> so sorry, I forgot to mention that because you're probably saying to me, what did you do to your hair? <gasps> I didn't bring all of it back. Okay, now there's shameless self-promotion, but I'll take a break because I only brought over the really giant ones. I didn't bring over all of them. So I'll be right back. Okay, so there will be an update on September 16th. Now, it'll be a little bit different than normal. Um, these will be sewn to order because what I'm going to try to do, well, no, what I am doing is I'm going to do a sweater and Aaron sweater update. So, like, I'm never quite sure, but as, as sweater weather approaches, right, I noticed that I was like, I need to do a sweater bag. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. And I've had a couple of people ask for them. So, I will do them as sewn to order, so they'll go out in like one to two weeks. Um, so I'll have that update on September 16th, and then on September 18th, if you remember the lady in the boat knitting, I'll put a picture up. Hopefully. 
If you remember the lady in the boat knitting with the milkman, that bag will go up September 18th. Now that will be a true pre-order, meaning I have not ordered that fabric. I don't have it in house. So that is a true pre-order, which is like three to four weeks, depending on how many people are interested. That is only available in sweater. And I will also make an Aran sweater for samples um, because that print is very big. So, so that'll be September 18th and that'll be three to four weeks because I have to order it's a custom print fabric. I have to order it. It takes a while, you know, blah, 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 to make them things happen. September 16th will be sewn to order. So I have all this fabric in house. It's all cut out, but we'll see if you really want it or not. Okay. Okay. There will be a sock bag, which I don't have a sample of yet because the fabric is in the mail, but that should also be there. It's out of the same cotton and steel line though. So there'll be two Halloween bags. There'll be a sock bag and there'll be this gal. And did you see, I'm sure you've, you've seen this fabric before because it's awesome and lots of folks are doing it. But the little ghosty dude is totally pearlescent. Like he's like got a little bit of something, something to him. So this is the large wedge. It's a natural lighting. There's that. Okay, the rest of them are Aaron and Aaron sweater bags. So if you only need little things. So there's this guy. like this fun like it's kind of got some fletching happening which I dig so much but it's just this nice so there's a blue color this blue one is only available in sweater but this one is available in the regular sweater and the Aaron sweater this is a good price, price comparison size comparison <laughs> Aaron sweater is very big <laughs> So again, I'm like a 22, 24 top and, um, I can fit a sport weight sweater in that size bag, like in the regular sweater. But if I'm knitting like a worsted weight sweater or like even my, excuse me, poncho is starting to need to move in to one of these big dudes. So everything will just have the natural line, but you can, they're very, they're pretty, like they don't just fit your head. They could like fit your head and your friend's head and also maybe your cat. They're, they're very yummy and spacious. That one is now $12 extra because I've got my hair all over it. <laughs> I'll let roll it, don't worry. <laughs> don't get murdered. My DNA will be in your in the crime scene. Also, just don't get murdered, okay? So there's those guys. And then these two, these are both of the big, these are the big Aaron sweaters, but they'll also be available in the smaller sweater size. I just don't have an example sewn up. So there's, I love this green so hard. Right, what's up with that green? So most of the bags are fall colors this time, but that green is just irresistible, so. Look at this one, which is like all terracotta-y and gorgeous. Now these Aaron sweater bags do not all stand up on their own. Because again, it's just a, such a big size, but I can't, Beep. but there's, they're still nice decorator weight fabrics. And then, well, since I've shown you all those errands, let's just keep going. So then this one is also an Aaron pattern. And then, okay, this one is kind of crazy but I love it and it would work perfectly for the kid along because it's this crazy sewing print, right? It's the tomato pin cushion. You know, you want the tomato pin cushion. And I was trying to figure out earlier why I enjoy this. I was like, why do I want this weird color and this hot pink together? And it occurred to me that's also the same combinations in my exploration station which is honey from Quince and Company and then like Rosa ghost Rigo, something or other. This is like, this, I love that combination. If this only had navy on it instead of black, but I'll settle. <laughs> so again, this is, now this is a quilter's cotton. So it is interfaced with the um, batting. So it's a spit. Anyway, it's big enough to hold like a 12 inch embroidery hoop. No problem. So it's great for 
the kit along. I think I'll use one to store my... I'm going to do another wool hooking thing. And then the other ones are the same. These are all quilters cotton with the, the batting interfacing. Um, hi, dogs and apple trees. That's awesome. <sighs> okay, I'll save that one for last because I don't even understand why I love it so much. And there's this beautiful, like, this beautiful sky-ish blue teal with brown. I love blue and brown. And there's an owl and a tree and a hare and a deer. And oh my gosh, I love it. Right. And then this fabric, I don't even understand. Can we discuss this fabric? Why does this bear make me insanely happy? I feel like he's a bear that maybe was born in like maybe a mental institution or... No, that's not right. He had to be born in a lab. Okay, he was born in a lab, but he was never actually experimented on because his hair, he was white, and so he was a genetic anomaly, so they couldn't experiment on him. But the lab tech fell in love with him, and she kept him as a pet. And maybe he wore tweed vests sometimes, and he worked in the lab and kept the paperwork organized, and he enjoyed a sandwich now and again. And then something happened, and the lab tech retired, and she moved to the country. Okay? And the bear's never been in nature before, but he likes to analyze it. And so he's not, he's not really fully just like frolicking in the nature. He's more like, I enjoy this nature and I will enjoy it in an analytical manner. <laughs> oh, this nature surprises me. I don't know what it is about him. <laughs> oh, this nature is exciting to me. Hmm. <laughs> I love him. I don't get it at all. This is a crazy color combination, which I also enjoy. But dude, that bear being excited in a calm way about nature makes me so happy. I don't even know how to explain it. So anyway, so that's the update. <laughs> There'll be another episode in a couple weeks. Until then, I hope you have a great week.